Hi, I'm Jim Matthew Sadler, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at a game between AlphaZero, DeepMind's general purpose artificial intelligence system, and Stockfish, winner of the 2016 Season 9 Top Chess Engine competition. Um, and of course, Stockfish, various versions, they are known as the strongest standard engine in the world. The game we're going to have a look at here is Stockfish was white and AlphaZero was black. And uh, it's a very interesting uh, game, in actual fact. Um, it shows AlphaZero's ability to transform advantages, to give up one advantage on one side in order to gain a bigger advantage on the other. And that's one of the most difficult strategic skills. And, uh, well, when humans achieve it, we think we're wonderful. So let's start off with, uh, with this game. The game started e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, and knight f6. Now, it's worth just spending a little bit of time with the opening here, because, uh, of course, AlphaZero has uh, discovered the best opening lines through self-play. And uh, strangely enough, most of its openings come out at the openings that are currently the most popular at the, at the top level nowadays, which is pretty impressive. And uh, in particular, this variation, the Berlin variation, has been played by, well, all of the top 10 for about the last uh, uh, 10 or 15 years. It was uh, rediscovered in, in the year 2000 uh, by Vladimir Kramnik in his World Championship match against Kasparov. Um, I say rediscovered because um, uh, the first games date from about 1895, um, when Harry Nelson Pillsbury, the great American player, was, uh, was playing it. Um, and well, when you see how good it is, you sort of think, oh, why did it take us another 100 years to discover that? But of course, uh, AlphaZero did it all in eight hours, so that's, that's pretty impressive. Very difficult position to handle. Um, Black has got the two bishops, um, but his, uh, his uh, queenside pawn structure is damaged. There's uh, double c pawns. Um, White's got a kingside pawn majority. If you manage to exchange off all the, uh, all the pieces, all the minor pieces and the major pieces, and went for a king and pawn ending, then, then White would probably be winning. But there's uh, a very long way to go before that, and Black's two bishops give uh, um, a lot of scope for counterplay. There's also the other point that the white pawn on e5 leaves a lot of central squares, light squares, undefended, which gives black an awful lot of counterplay. Stockfish played, um, well, a, a decent line, not the most critical line, and AlphaZero responded with a, a very solid line, exchanging off the knights. Of course, black's position is a, a little bit cramped, so exchanging minor pieces is a good idea. Um, and the game proceeded uh, normally until this point. And this is, uh, I think, a new move by um, uh, by AlphaZero, and very typical of its play. It loves moving its rook's pawns forward in order to gain space on the wings. Um, and well, as we can see in the game, it certainly uh, enjoyed itself to the utmost there. So after c3, h4, rook d2, rook h5, um, another point of uh, moving the, uh, the rook's pawn is you can get your rooks active uh, through the side. Um, Stockfish went h3. Um, AlphaZero didn't take the pawn on e5, um, because White would play bishop f4 and uh, regain the pawn on c7. Um, it's nothing special for White, but um, AlphaZero is looking for a little bit more than that. And, well, maybe you can guess what, uh, what AlphaZero did. It went on the other side with a5. It's really good. It's strategy on, uh, on both sides of the board, and that's one of uh, AlphaZero's big strengths, to be able to, yeah, in a way, view the whole board in one go and, uh, and yeah, perform acts on both sides. So... Stockfish didn't really manage to find a plan. It is quite difficult, um, but, um, well, kept on playing very solidly and putting its pieces on, on reasonable squares. Um, and here AlphaZero starts chipping away at the light squares. Remember, the light squares are the ones that have been weakened because the um, uh, white's light squared bishop has been exchanged. Um, and after knight d4, the bishop retreats to d7, b4, c5. Now we start to feel, I think, that, um, that Black's position is getting slightly better because, uh, of course, one of the compensations for White of, uh, of uh, giving up the bishop pair was that Black had a double c-pawn. And now with c5, AlphaZero manages to exchange that. B takes c5, bishop takes c5. The moves continue a little bit, a little bit of manoeuvring. Uh, Stockfish trying to find some good squares for its pieces, in particular the knight. Um, it's hard to find a good outpost for it, but uh, d5 is not too bad. And now AlphaZero takes the, the first of a number of, uh, of very good decisions. Bishop e6, knight c6, and then this rook pawn comes in again, a3. 
Um, quite impressive, actually. Uh, one pawn on h4, the other one on a3. Ooh, that one there, and that one there. Now, this is a, an interesting moment because um, Stockfish could actually play the move uh, knight takes e7 and uh, go for an opposite colored bishop ending. And, uh, well, we're often taught as, uh, as kids that uh, opposite colored bishops, that means a draw. But um, Alpha Zero doesn't actually agree with that. It's, um, it plays positions with opposite colored bishops very, very well. Um, and whether that's with queens on or without queens. I think what Alpha Zero likes about it is that when, the, when both sides have got opposite colored bishops, it means that Alpha Zero's bishop has got an unchallenged view over the whole board. All of, it, all of the squares belong to its bishop. And um, that sort of enormous mobility is something that Alpha Zero exploits very well. In this position, um, the uh, pawn on a2 is, uh, is very, very weak. And uh, if you could just imagine it's targeted by the light squared bishop. Let's put a huge arrow on there. Targeted by the light squared bishop. And uh, if that pawn gets removed, then this a pawn will move on and queen. So Stockfish decided to keep the knight. It's after all in a, in a quite an advanced position. It's cramping black's position and played the, uh, the solid king h2. And alpha zero starts to, uh, always what it does, it starts trying to tug a little bit at the, uh, at, at the, the opponent's position, tries to shake it a little bit, see whether anything will, uh, will come out of it. f6, rook e1, ah, Stockfish holds things together, so alpha zero closes the center, f5, but takes control of some more light squares. Knight d4, bishop d7, bishop f2, rook d8, rook e e2. And now, the moment that, uh, well, the, the period of the game that's really, really impressive. And the reason I wanted to show this. Um, so, yeah, I, I was, um, I was uh, demonstrating this, uh, this game to, uh, um, to the British player, Natasha Regan. And uh, I showed in this position that um, I thought that Black's plan was going to be the following. Black was going to play the move bishop c5, exchange off the bishop for this knight, and then take control of those light squares and target the pawn on a2. Um, now, the reason I thought that was um, not because of my uh, grandmasterly genius, although that obviously plays a role, but I'd actually seen um, uh, Alpha Zero playing a similar plan in that position. But it just shows the, the breadth of strategy that, um, uh, that uh, Alpha Zero has at its disposal, because here it goes for a completely different plan. It plays the move c5, very normal, you might say, attacking the knight, driving it away from the center. But after knight to c2, uh, then we see that uh, this pawn here is, uh, well, rather weak, actually, it's attacked. But that doesn't bother Alpha Zero at all. The yeah, material never really worries about that. It plays the great concept, g5, and after knight takes a3, uh, it doesn't regain its pawn, which it could do with g takes f4. It plays the move g4, and after king g1, g3, we start to understand the point of what Alpha Zero is doing. So on the queen side, it had its pride and joy. This pawn, it spent, you know, many moves uh, moving it to an advanced square, and it's just given it away. And on the king side, it's now got an enormous uh, advantage in space. And the key thing about this pawn on g3 is that um, it restricts the king on g1. Good lord. Restricts the king on g1. And that restricted king on g1 will be unable to move off the back rank. And that means that any endings with major pieces, so with a rook on the board, are going to be very, very dangerous for white, because a rook on the back rank from black will mean mate of a king. Now, the other interesting thing, and another typical thing about Alpha Zero, is that by giving away that pawn on the rook's file, um, Alpha Zero has actually opened up a line, a line here, to, um, uh, to actually attack along the A file. And that is uh, um, an incredibly powerful idea. Alpha Zero is always looking to give away pawns in order to give its rooks extra activity. So let's have a look how this, um, how this works out. So bishop e3, rook a8 on the A file, knight c4, and then rook h6. Now the one drawback to Alpha Zero's plan of gaining all that space is that it's got a, a huge area of the board to defend. There are plenty of holes in its position. So Alpha Zero's um, first task here is to keep control, to consolidate, and then once it's consolidated the position, it's going to expand. Um, and uh, 
yeah, it takes a lot of calculation. And uh, believe me, it's not easy against Stockfish. But, um, well, AlphaZero manages beautifully. Um, Rook A4, gradually creeping forward now. It's uh, AlphaZero sort of uh, absorbed the first attack and uh, is now creeping forward. And now this sequence is very nice as well because I think it shows the same um, type of idea as we had for um, the earlier giving up of the pawn on A3. So Stockfish plays C4 and Knight D5, activating the Knight, opening uh, the B file, and also trying to um, uh, maybe blockade on the, uh, on the C3 square here. Let's see if we can get those arrows right. Absolutely not. So um, what Alpha Zero does here, it's got a pawn back that it sacrificed. Shouldn't it be happy with that? Absolutely not. It gives the pawn back in order to get an incredibly active square for the rook. That rook is attacking the bishop on c1. It's also attacking the pawn on f4. So Stockfish here is in full defensive mode. And I can tell you nobody defends better than Stockfish. But this position is getting more and more difficult. I think the next sequence of play is very nice too, uh, because it shows this, um, um, the, the, the key idea of restricting the opponent's king. So after uh, king f1, Stockfish bringing the king towards the center, trying to get that king out. Um, but alpha zero slams the door shut. A check forces the white king back into the corner. And that king is really in a box in the corner. It's, uh, it's on g1. It can't move to f2 or h2. It's only got the, uh, the miserable square h1. Now, what's uh, alpha zero's standard way of winning these positions? Um, you know, some uh, machines go for glorious combinations. Alpha zero is very, very calm. What it tries to do, it tries to exchange off all the opponent's active pieces, leave it only with passive pieces, and then mop up the rest. And we see how this, uh, how this works in practice. There's a few nice creeping moves, bishop d3. Um, the rook comes to b2, alpha zero grabs the pawn on the way, and this Rook on the seventh rank forces uh, white to um, swap off the rooks. Well, rook's an active piece, so alpha zero is happy to exchange it, and on we go. Now after c4, white could play knight takes c7, take the bishop, but uh, of course the knight is one of white's only remaining active pieces, so Stockfish wants to try and keep it. But we've got a, a situation here that um, uh, we christened the lonely knight because uh, it's something that you see quite often in these games between Alpha Zero and Stockfish, that uh, Stockfish ends up with um, a knight on, a, on an outpost advanced, but disconnected from the rest of its pieces, and, um, um, and unable to help in the, in the struggle that's actually happening much closer to its own king. So after uh, the moves bishop c3, rook b8, bishop d4, bishop b4, rook d1, rook b5, you may guess what uh, uh, Alpha Zero is going for here. So move bishop c5. Um, and here uh, Stockfish resigned. Um, may look a little bit uh, early, but these machines, uh, well, they can see quite far ahead. The basic idea is that after bishop takes c5, rook takes c5, um, well, let's uh, make white make a move. We're going to go king e7. We're going to go, in all calmness, something like king e6. And then afterwards, um, we're just simply going to move the c pawn down to queen, all the way to queen and there's nothing that white can do about it. So what's the impressive thing about this game? Um, well, first of all, I'm impressed by the opening choice. I mean, I think it's great that, uh, that Alpha Zero has worked out for itself in eight hours what uh, it's taken uh, humans about 200 years to, uh, to finally discover. But I think what, what really impressed me was this flexibility of thought. Um, first of all, the um, um, play on both sides of the board, looking at the whole board and seeing where you can gain things on both sides. And then afterwards, the ability to judge Okay, this advantage on the uh, on the queen side, it's not worth as much as the advantage I can get on the queen on the king side, and then weaving that together, and you'll notice that after gaining that advantage on the king side, Alpha Zero went back to the other side of the board in order to invade. Um, yeah, it's it was uh, an ending that well impressed me deeply the first time I saw it, and uh, yeah, playing through here, here here again. I mean, I I really like it again. So uh, I hope you do too.